Hello students, how are you all? I hope you are fit and fine and studying also. Children, as you all know, we have completed 9 chapter of your An Alien Hand Supplementary Reader Book. And we have started chapter number 10. This is last chapter of your this supplementary book. So, uh, we have completed first part of the story, An Alien Hand, chapter number 10. And comprehension check we were doing yesterday. And as we have seen or we have completed two questions, question and answer. Today we are going to start from third question. The third question is, why did Tilu's father advise him not to try to reach the surface of the planet? As we have seen, because the temperature of that surface was very low. That is why the oxygen is very less over there. That is why his father said this. So now children, let's write third answer. Answer number three. And this is your comprehension check. Okay children, so now I am going to write answer number 3. Now Tillu's father, Tillu's father advised, advised him, advised him, advised him not to try, not to try to reach the, to reach the surface, surface of the planet, of the planet by that we are going to write because the air because the air the air was too thin was too thin to breathe to breathe too thin to breathe and and the temperature temperature and temperature was so low was so low now children that one would freeze to death that one would Freeze to death. Freeze to death. So now children, we have completed third number answer. That is, Tillu's father advised him not to try to reach the surface of the planet because the air was too thin to breathe and the temperature was so low that one would freeze to death. Now children, we are going to do fourth question. What changes had occurred which forced people to live in the underground homes? Now children, we are going to write the answer number four. Now children, we are going to write answer number four. Answer number four, we are going to write children. The changes that had occurred, the changes that had occurred, that had occurred, which forced people, which forced 
people which force people to live in to live in underground underground homes was that was that the sun the sun which had provided provided sustainable sustains 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 turn hostile turn hostile and what happened turn hostile it changed slightly it changed slightly it changed slightly but the change was sufficient but the change was sufficient but the change was sufficient to upset the to upset the balance to upset the balance of nature of nature of nature on this planet on this planet on this planet now the birds animals and fish the birds animals animals and fish and fish now here you can see fish could not bear it couldn't bear it couldn't bear it couldn't bear it and became and became extinct extinct so this is answer number 4 children complete it now after that we will do we will start second part of the story so take a screenshot now we are moving to next part of the story now before going to start the next part of the story three points are there which can summarize this story in short first point the big screen in the control room shows an alien spacecraft second the question whether there is a life on other planets exercises everybody's mind and the third point the president of the central committee is about to make an important statement now children let's start reading next day when tilu's father went to the work he found the control room full of excitement people were crowded around the big tv screen it shows a dot in an otherwise clear background now children next day when after adv advice of that um, tilu he went to his work again his father went back to his work again now next day when tilu's father went to work he found what he found he found some people were gathered near the big screen tv and one dot is occurring from the tv 
and it shows a dot in an otherwise clear background. Only a dot was there but otherwise the whole background was clear. It isn't a star for its changing its position. Our computer has given a trajectory for this thing. It's a heading towards her. The supervisor of the last ship explained. Now here children, now their conversation was started over here and they said it isn't a star. They had a confusion about that. So that is why they have discussed isn't it a star of its changing its position and it is quite changing its position. Now our computer had been given a trajectory for this thing. Now our computer is recognized as a thing. It's a heading towards her. The heading was there. The supervisor of the last shift explained. Now because of this observation the heading was there or you can the topic of the there, there that the supervisor will give the explanation because he was in the last shift. A spacecraft, Tillu's father asked. By now he was joined by the teammates on the new shift. A spacecraft, maybe it was a space car. So Tillu's father asked. So because there was so many confusion, so that is why the Tillu's father also asked this question, spacecraft. Now, but now he was joined by his teammates on the new shift. Now he just joined in the new shift, that is why he asked. So we think, but it needs watching. So we think, because there were all uh, workmates were there, so they were thinking about that. But, but it needs watching. So be very cautious. So we just uh, came to the conclusion, what was this? A spacecraft, where from? The solar system wasn't known to have any life anywhere else except on their planet. Now here you can see a spacecraft is a question where from? Where it is coming from? The solar system wasn't known to have any life anywhere. So the solar system is not able to recognize anyone, any person, anything, any life other than their planets. Tillu's father recalled the ancient days recorded in the archives at the Central Bureau when their ancestors had a well-developed space program and had uh, searched the solar system with manned and unmanned spacecraft and found that they were indeed alone. Now in the days of the energy shortage and underground life, they had no space program. They could only watch impotently from their vantage point who were these strangers. Tillu's father remembered the ancient days recorded in the archives in the Central Bureau when their ancestor had a well-developed space program. He recalled, Tillu's father recalled that previous programs which was settled or organized by his ancestors. So with manned and unmanned spacecraft and found they were indeed alone. So this type of the experiment the ancestor had already done. Now in the days of energy shortage and underground life, they had no space program because of the energy shortage or underlined program, underground program, they had no space program. They were not planning any space program. They could only watch importantly from their vantage point 
who were these strangers. So only the work was left to watch these type of the things which were very unknown for them they used to watch. The conference room in the central bureau was so quiet that an outsider would have thought it was empty. Far from it, it was full to captivity but the members of the central committee were unusually quiet. They knew that the president was going to make a momentous announcement. So after this strange thing they had seen, so the conference room was, you can say, pin drop silence were, was there. So nobody uh, can felt that anything was going on inside the conference hall, but every member of that craft was waiting for the announcement of this chairperson or president. Colleagues, I will give you the report as I have it. While I speak, there may be a change in the situation. The president paused to get his papers in order and then continued. Two spacecraft are approaching us. One is in the fact outbeating our planet while the other is still far away. We guess that they are coming from our neighboring planet. How should we react? Number one, you, your views, please. Now here, children, they just started talking about and their speech was started. Colleagues, the uh, workmate, those who are working over there, he just addressed. I will give you the report as I have it. Whatever I have as a report, I will give you. While I speak, there may be a change in the situation because this is unpredictable situation. So that is why there will be change in the situation while my speaking. The president paused to get his paper in order and then continued. And he just gave a pause to collect the papers and then he continued the speech. So now two spacecrafts are approaching us. Now he announced that two spacecraft are approaching us or coming to us. One is in the fact outbeating our planet while the other is still far away. Now one of them very near to us and one is far away for us, from us. One is in the fact orbiting our planet. It means the orbit is there, the planet's orbits, you, as you all know, you are science students, you uh, must have known that orbit, every planet having its orbit. And here the first spacecraft had already entered in the orbiting area of that planet and other is far away from the planet. Now, because this is really, really a very terrifying condition for any planet. One is in the fact orbiting our planet while the other is still far away. We guess that they are coming from our neighboring planet. Now here the president said, that I think, I suspect that these type of the aircraft were coming from neighboring planets. It means those uh, are our neighboring planets, they are coming from that areas. Now children, how should we react? Number one, your views please. Now, he addressed the um, workmates and he said how do we react he just asked how do we react from these neighboring aircraft because I am suspecting that these uh, aircrafts were coming from that uh, neighbors uh, planets so how do we react these this is the most important question and I would like to ask uh, to give the answer how do we react now I am going to writing the point 
whatever you are telling i'll write these points inside my diary and we will uh, practice or we will do on workout on that points number 1 was in change or in of defense he was known for his courage and wisdom sir if we wish we can totally destroy these spacecraft with our missiles but that won't make us any wiser we do not have the captivity uh, capacity to render these craft unoperational in space but should they land we can render them ineffective any time we choose our report says that they do not contain living beings they only have instruments so many type of the ideas and suggestion were coming up that time one said number 1 was in charge of defense he said he was known for his courage and wisdom one number 1 was in charge of defense he said he was known as a very uh, courageous person so he said sir we wish uh we wish we can totally destroy these spacecraft so we are having a power to destroy we are having these type of instrument and missiles we can uh destroy these type of the missiles which were come uh, aircraft which were coming from the other planet so this is uh we are ready for the war now sir if we wish we can totally destroy this spacecraft with our missiles but that won't make us any wiser but the suggestion was there that don't make us any wiser because we do not have these type of the power we do not have the capacity to render these aircraft on operation in space in a space if it is flying in the space we we haven't have had any type of the power to this mental or this operational but if we it will uh, it will come to the our place then we are having power or instrument to uh, unoperational we will do unoperational these things so our reports say that they do not contain living beings so this uh, wise person said that our um news are the search or data said that there inside that uh, spacecraft there is no any person only instruments are there so they only have instruments only they had only and only they had only instruments number 2 your opinion please the president asked the scientist on the committee now here he asked to the security person and now he moved to the uh, next person next group that is uh, uh, that is the president asked to the opinion scientist scientist committee he asked now the turn of the scientist was there so children the scientist on the committee i recommended non interference and passive observation now scientists started giving their suggestion the suggestion was very authentic you can see i commanded non i recommended non interference be still be calm and watch their movements in the or their activity in the space so this is the suggestion given by the scientist we do not know the power of senders of those spacecraft so we just uh, analyzing these type of the spacecraft that they were coming from the neighborhood but it is not uh, we cannot very much confirmed that these aircraft were coming from the neighborhood because we do not know any type of the uh, strength of the uh um, you can say that those who are sending this type of the spacecraft we are still in the dark about their intentions so here the scientists advised 
that we do not know what are the intention of sending these type of the spacecraft. So it is our suggestion to be calm and still and be very cautious. Of course, be cautious, but be calm. Shant rahiye. Then just observe. Observation must be there to what they were doing in the space. So observation must be there. So if we destroy these spaceships or render them ineffective, we might reveal our existence. So this is quite intelligent idea that was given by the science committee. So uh, because their idea was very uh, much relevant because uh, first you just watch or observe the movement and activity of these spacecraft which were sending from where we don't know, we were not confirm about that. So we have to wait, we have to wait what they will do with us and then be ready for the war, be ready for everything for the consequences but if we destroy these spacecraft or render them in ineffective we might reveal our existence. So be very quiet, be very patient, observe their activity. If we are going to destroy it, if we are going to uh, unoperational it or ineffective these render, so then we should reveal our existence. So be calm and quiet and be hidden inside that place. The president looked at the number three, a social scientist. Now this was the science committee and now they, uh, the president moved to the social science. Now the third, um, you can say the third uh, observation or you can say the advice or suggestion were ready to give. Now here the president looked at the number uh, three, a social scientist. He rarely agreed with number two, but this was one of those who rare occasions when he did. So he was not very much agreed with that uh, th second number suggestion. So when he did, I agree with number two, sir. In fact, I will go so far as to say that we should keep our surface activities to minimum, thus creating the impression that there is no life on this planet. Fortunately, our surface condition do give that impression. So uh, many times, many uh, very often uh, this social scientist was not very much agree of number two or scientist. So he said after that thinking of or that point. So he suggested that number two is suggesting is quite good. So we should keep our mouth mum or you can say we can shut our mouth because we should see the activity which were going on the surface or in the space area. So be, be patient because when we give this type of the activity we will start this type of the acti activity to destroy or to um, unoperational, we are just going to unoperational these type of the spacecraft, then uh, we should reveal our identity. And uh, if we are not doing that, so the spacecraft which were coming from other planets or anywhere, so they just understand that there is no any social activity, this is dead planet. So that is why this number three or social scientist has very much agreed with that second point. So um, fortunately our surface condition do give that impression because we are very dry and very rough planet so that is why. So this impression will be work. Before the president could speak his personal telephone rang. He lifted the receiver and listened quietly for a minute. And after this, this suggestion of social scientist, his, uh, the president's uh, phone rang and he just 
uh, quiet for a moment and he lifted the receiver and listened quietly for a minute. Colleagues, he announced, the first spacecraft has landed. Now, the informer had informed to uh, this, uh, the president that first spacecraft was landed and he announced president as he just cut down that uh, uh, phone call and he in the meeting he announced the spacecraft which is very much near to this planet it landed it already landed now we are moving to the comprehension check uh, this is uh, you can find on page number 71 why was everyone in the control room greatly excited? Was the spacecraft uh, meant or unmanned? How do you know it? What did the number one and number two suggest should be done about alien spacecraft? So children, we will do it later. So we will do uh, the next part of the story. We are going to start the next part of the story. That next part of the story having three points.